Well, the wife and I took a nice little vacation over to the coast, Fort Bragg, California. And I happened to stop into a local thrift store that I frequent over there, and I found this. This is an Onkyo TXNR727, remarkably similar to the TXNR636 that I'm trying to work on right now that had multiple defective resistors and a shorter capacitor and whatnot. So I thought, I'm going to pick this thing up. It was out to lunch, as they call it, and the note on the side of it says, when turned on, it turns itself off unknown and so i said self for ten dollars you really can't lose on this thing so i brought it home took the top off powered it up and let me show you the dc voltage across one set of emitter resistors 1.7 amps it's drawing almost three amps of current here wow once the main relay closed it went up to way over four amps so something's going on with that center channel amplifier in this unit but what's interesting is if i pull the driver board out of this unit and power the unit back up. No, oh, I still see high current. It was not doing high current previously. So something just died in this thing. That is very interesting. But nevertheless, it's got a very, very similar driver board. So I'm just not gonna rob any parts off of the center channel right here, but it does have the right and the left channels that are still working perfectly fine. It is slightly a different layout than the 636 that I'm currently working on but it does share the exact same, I don't even know what you call it, they, they name it a BA Amp 1367 transistor PCB board. So here's the two schematics. On the left is the 727 and on the right is the 636. And as you can see, electrically they are identical. Let's take a look at the preamp and the power amp boards. So the 636 is on the right with the circled components that were defective and the 727 is on the left. Electrically, they look exactly the same. Even a lot of the part numbers are exactly the same. It does show some differences here. I don't think that's gonna be a problem. Once again, electrically, they are virtually exactly the same board. So I think I can use the 727 as donor parts for the 636 so I don't have to keep ordering these parts that really are only available from China for some odd reason. Once again, 727 on the left, 636 on the right. And they do use different output transistors because I believe the 636 is rated at a higher RMS output than the 727 is. And they design these things to a price point, not to a functionality point. So yeah, you'll see a lot of differences. But the main thing I'm interested in is this is the bias regulating transistor right here, 2SC 2412K or KTC 3875 and it's a 2SC 2412K. So if I need that transistor, it's exactly the same. Unfortunately, I can't use the output transistors in this unit, and the 636 does have a couple of 0.22 ohm base drive resistors, where the 727 does not. It's directly coupled to the amplifier board, the preamp board. Okay, well, it certainly is nice to have the option of a donor board for parts, because let me tell you something, this thing had pure carnage all over the place. All kinds of parts were bad. Basically every transistor with the exception of this one right there got replaced on this board and this one also. They were kind of out of the loop for some reason, but every transistor, that one, that one, that one, that one, those all got changed, those two got changed, those two resistors got changed from the donor board. And yeah, lots of carnage. This resistor, this whole board actually was bad. I replaced it from the donor unit. Let's take a look at the other side. So yeah, just major carnage going on on this board. I still haven't tested the outputs. I need to test those, make sure they're okay, as, as well as the bias tracking transistor. We'll do that next, but let me show you in the schematic all the parts that got replaced. So basically, if it's circled in red, it got replaced. And it either tested bad, or in the case of some of the resistors, I could tell that they've been very hot and discolored, so I went ahead and replaced them anyhow. Once again, the luxury of having a donor board available. What a blessing that was. Okay, so I have two meters set up right here. The one on the left is measuring the DC offset, and the one on the right is gonna be measuring the bias across the emitter resistor in millivolts. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up the AC power slowly and try to get this thing to power on at low voltage because if there still is a problem, there's less of a chance of it doing damage on low voltage versus all the way up at 120. So I'm going to power this thing on. We'll crank this thing up to about 40 or 50 volts. Hit the power button. Got to bring it up high enough where it'll latch in.
There we go, main power relay on. I'm up to about 70 volts right now, and I have 0.3 millivolts DC offset. So let's go ahead and see if this pot is gonna go ahead and give us some more DC offset, and yes, it is, look at that. So currently we are drawing about 60 watts, and I am at 90 volts. I'm gonna bring it up the rest of the way slowly. The current is staying about the same. Gonna turn this down a little bit because it's creeping up. I've got a good DC offset of 0.024 volts, and I've got nine millivolts of DC bias across the emitter resistors. We'll let this thing warm up for a minute, and we'll put some audio into it and see what it sounds like. So I went ahead and cranked up the bias a little bit, took it up a little more to about 50 millivolts. That's quite a bit of current flowing through those transistors. And what I really wanna see this do is come up and then normalize and then start going down as it recognizes the heat sink coming up to temperature. So we'll just let it cook for a few minutes. Hopefully it'll crest and then start to subside. Well, it seems to be holding pretty steady at about 58 millivolts right now. The heat sink is getting warm because I am pulling a lot of current through that one channel right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and back it down and we'll set it at about 11 millivolts. And it actually should start to change once it cools down. And it is dropping now that it's cooling down. So that's good. So pretty happy with the repair so far. We just need to feed some audio into this thing and see if it's gonna make some sounds. So I have it back to 10 millivolts, well 9.9, .9, and it is still cooling down, so it is dropping slightly. But let's go ahead and power this thing off. Then we'll power it back on. And we'll see what it stabilizes at. So it says to run it for between four and six minutes before adjusting the idling current. So I'll let it sit here and cook for a few minutes once again. I did test the outputs. I did test the emitter resistor as well as the temperature compensating resistor as best that I could without pulling this thing out. I just had to do an ohmmeter test. I couldn't actually check the diodes. Hopefully you can still see that. I have it on manual exposure. But I did check ohmmeter between pin 1 and pin 4, which are the only two pins that you can access without pulling this thing completely out of the unit. And it did test perfectly fine. I did compare it to the other channels. Everything else is exactly the same, so pretty happy with that. And it's sitting at 9.5 millivolts right now after running for about two minutes. So let's put some audio into it and see if it crackles. Hopefully not. Okay, so I do have a digital audio signal via the Toslink input going into it right now. And I only have the center channel connected, which was the defective channel. And I'm getting perfect sound out of it. So let's skip ahead and get some dialogue on this thing. You do understand English. This isn't that complex. Look, the cafeteria is down the hall, to the right, and downstairs. Okay, work it absolutely perfect. I'm so happy yeah, that I finally got this thing so going. Cool. And I do believe that the entire thing was caused by water intrusion on the circuit board. I don't think it had a bad speaker or anything like that. I think it was just that corrosion on the board. So I'm gonna tell my customer down in Manteca to make sure that no water gets into this thing because it is very detrimental to the operation of this unit. Okay, well, I found out why the tuner wasn't working in this thing. It's not merely a suggestion. It actually needs to be plugged in. So I was trying to tune an FM radio station just to make sure everything worked before I send this thing back to my customer. And I had absolutely no tuner operation. But here's a sneak preview of most of the parts that got replaced in this unit. 
We'll follow up on that after I get the tuner connected and do a test. Okay, well, unfortunately, the connector to the tuner was not the issue. I reconnected the tuner module and it still does not work. I did a full factory reset and still nothing. But I have an auxiliary input going into it with some audio. So let's crank it up and see what happens. <laughs> So it's working good. Any distortion you might've heard is definitely on the microphone end and not on the stereo end. I know this microphone does overload when the audio level is too high. But one last thing, like I said, let's go ahead and take a look at all the parts that got replaced on this thing. Okay, well there are all the parts that were bad in this unit. So the amp board right here, which uses two transistors in parallel and then two more in parallel, this set was definitely shorted, so luckily the donor unit had the exact same board so I could replace them. I did go ahead and replace both of the driver transistors as well as the pre-drivers and the pre-pre-drivers. Had three little surface mount resistors right here that were definitely burned or out of tolerance. And then a couple of the, the transistors that are in the differential circuit to amplify the signal. A couple of those were definitely bad. I replaced the third one just to be safe. Shorted capacitor, dead short. And then eight 1 8 watt fusible resistors got replaced. But I think that's the end of a long journey. I definitely underquoted this one. I quoted for three hours. I probably got six into it. But nevertheless, I'm going to go ahead and honor my estimate, put this thing back together and ship it back to the customer. Even though the tuner does not work, I'm going to ask him if he wants me to address that. I may have to get a new tuner module. It might be a data communication issue. So we'll have to see if he even wants to address that. Anyhow, that's it, the end of the video. The Onkyo TXNR636, back up and running once again after a lot of failures. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really helps my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me norcal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Please be patient. I do have a full-time job and I do this in my spare time. If you send me a message to Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, please be aware I may not check those for weeks or even months at a time. I primarily focus on the Gmail. So if you want to contact me, use norcal715videos at gmail.com. Everybody, thank you for making it to part two of this video. I really do appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Incidentally, this is the center channel speaker only connected at this point. Okay, here we go. Check this out. I've got the tuner working once again. I was going to completely abandon this thing, but I figured out what was going on. So a little bonus material. So that's the channel that got repaired right there. All those parts got replaced. That board got changed. Turn some light on so you can see it down there. There we go. So I was finishing this thing up and I'm using these test points right there to check the idling current on every channel after it's warmed up fully and see that one right there SBR I freaking slipped and I shorted that plug right there on the bottom you can see that connects the preamp board to the power amplifier and I freaking blew the thing up so I had to do a repair on this replace both driver both pre drivers a couple of burnt resistors and both output transistors. And in the process, I determined, because I had to pull this thing completely apart, and I don't even think I can get my phone down so you can see it. Yeah, see that ribbon cable down there that connects the silver box? That is the tuner. 
Well, I got that part connected correctly, but the other end of this where it goes back onto the main board down here, it actually connects on the bottom board down here. It was partially unplugged. So I got the thing plugged in and the tuner is once again working great. This thing is working at 100% capacity. All right, there you go. A little bonus material. Thanks for watching. Everyone have a great day. Bye-bye.